You have offended my family, and you have offended the Shaolin Temple. Hi guys. So, sitting part two, when you've got back pain, enter the couch. Um, so, after obviously if you sit in an office or you sit on a laptop for long periods, that's probably the main aggro for a lot of people. Um, but another common one for a lot of people is obviously sit on a couch. Uh, it can be quite horrific for people. So obviously, even, you know, if you've, especially if you've got a family or friends, you're spend time them watching movies or Netflix or TV, whatever it may be. Um, obviously, for a lot of people, even looking at the couch is going to give them a twinge in their lower back. Um, so what's so bad about couches? And are they really the work of Satan himself? Well, uh, probably the biggest problem, and this is probably a, a, a sort of old couch, a bit of a prime example of this, um, is that the biggest problem is the actual foam that they tend to use. Um, is kind of like usually it's generally sort of the cheapest spec stuff, which even when it's brand new isn't the most supportive um, in terms of sort of you know foam or memory foam that you could buy. But then obviously this like this couch here is a few years old. Obviously it just gets worse over time and even less and less supported. So there's kind of two problems with your couch or two main issues. One is obviously um, lack of lumbar support at the back here, which obviously you could tidy up like I have here. I've got my little trusty super cheap border lumbar support with a cushion as well to kind of make up the sort of difference. And I can sort of sit back into that. And it gives you a little bit of something, something, but you've still got to be careful. Um, obviously it's still entirely possible to sort of slouch, especially if you're watching your TV, a lot of people sort of tend to sort of slip forward or they're looking forward at the foam, which obviously put you back in that flex position. And that lumbar support isn't going to help. Whereas if you sort of lean back a little bit into it, then it'll give you a little bit of help and a bit of support. Um, but even then, for the couch again, obviously we've got one sort of set of rubbish cushions at the back, but also we've got the ones you actually sat on. Um, so more often than not, they'll generally sort of put you in a weird position where you'll be sort of slighted, slightly tilted. So not only are you probably slightly rounded, but now you kind of your, your, your pelvis is going to be slightly tilted one way or the other. So now you've introduced not just sort of forward flexion like that, but now you're kind of like slightly buckled to the sides. You've got a bit of sort of sideways uh, lateral flexion on as well. So if people say to me what's more aggravating than just general flexion for the average person, I'd say if you combined it with compression, so being sat down, and the force obviously the chair pushing the bottom of your spine, and then lateral flexion at the same time, we think like the idea of the bank account, you know, every minute you sit there, that's gonna drain that bank account very, very quickly uh, for a lot of people. The other thing is obviously is generally you have sort of armrest at one end or the other. So if you sort of sit on an armrest, that's probably going to make that kind of sideways buckle slightly worse as you kind of drop your weight towards the armrest. So again, further exacerbates that kind of uh, drain. Um, and then obviously the next issue is, um, for a lot of people, so you might sit here in a bad position and may not necessarily feel it as that bank is draining, but if they try and stand up, if they've got a slightly iffy technique, um, you know, that's probably going to, when well, you're going to really feel it sort of grab and set you off. Um, so what I do next is just give you a quick, um, technique for uh, well, like a short stop squat technique to get out of a bad chair or a bad couch that said sort of uh, limit the amount of damage you'll do to yourself and I'll also give you some other strategies for actually sitting you know using a couch that might be better for you. The couch we're going to assume I've been sat really badly or kind of just like twisted and just kind of very slouchy and lazily so what I'm going to do first of all is get my feet set so what I want is my feet for me particularly quite wide, so wider than my hips certainly. I'm gonna try and get my heels in as close towards where my bum is and maybe shift forward a little bit. And it's a little bit of brace here. Try and stay nice and tight. And then the key here is we're gonna use it, your hands on your thighs or your knees as a bit of sort of extra buttress and support for your spine. So from here, a little bit of brace engage. I'm gonna lean forward a little bit, try and get my weight over where sort of the center of my foot is. And then from here, we drive up like that. So I'm using my legs, I'm using my hands, my arms for a bit of extra support to kind of get me for that last bit. So I kind of minimize the chance of that slight sort of catch as I get up. And obviously then to sit down, the best way to do it is back into the couch and then just reverse it. So legs wide, let the hands slide down the legs, top of the knees, and then just use the knees and then control as much as you can and down. But again, it's, it's not gonna be perfect necessarily, but we, we get it as good as we can. Um, to manage that bank out as much as we can and lessen the chance of a sudden like sharp catch. Um, that's obviously gonna you know, set you back a few days with your back recovery. 
So again, just take your time. It's a modified short squat position, short stop squat position. And it's basically using your hands to help kind of buttress, keeping the spine nice and straight as you kind of sit up and get your hips underneath you. The third method is just to kind of do this. So I've got a cushion on the floor. I sit cross-legged, which not everyone can do, depends on how tight and stiff your hips are. And I'm actually using the sort of the, the kind of the, the base of the couch, uh, the bottom piece of, bit of like support, just so I can sort of lean back into it, keep my back straight. Again, if you needed to, you can add you know, like a cushion, get an actual lumbar support in there if you want to, and just kind of hold yourself upright a bit more, make yourself as comfy as possible. What I will say in this position, like any position when you're sitting, you're not moving for a long period, um, if you stay in any position for long enough, there's something will get annoyed. So for me, when my legs are crossed like this, it normally makes my left hip a little bit tight at the front. And it can make my hamstrings a little bit tired as I've been sat there for hours. So one way to work around that is if, you know, sort of alternate, have my legs crossed and then sort of stretch my legs out for a bit like this. And I can also sort of, you know, pull my toes up a little bit, give my calves a little bit of a stretch, a bit of a waggle, get some blood going again. And just sort of alternate between those two sort of strategies for me. And then once I've really had enough, then that's time to kind of get up, have a little walk around for a couple of minutes and I can come back to it again once the back feels a bit more refreshed. Uh, another option, uh, which I quite like, again, depends on um, sort of flexibility, um, particularly in the knee joints, is we can sort of have a, a cushion to sort of kneel on and then just sit almost like Japanese style. So I'm just sat on my heels here and you can sort of adjust your legs as well as you want instead of this. Obviously, for a lot of people, because their quads are super tight, uh, particularly those with back issues, it's very common for these muscles to be horrifically tight. Um, this can be a bit of an issue. So it's either going to put pressure on the actual quads itself, or you might sort of have niggly knees from it. Um, so having the cushion on the floor helps to a degree. Uh, but then what you might want to do is take another cushion like something like this, and I can perch that on top of my heels and sit my bum on that, and that takes a bit more pressure off again. And again, you can sort of maybe use a cover to jack yourself up, and as you get used to it, you can very slowly sort of work your way down depending on your heels. Um, this can be quite a good sort of um, passive way to start actually sort of stretching these out a little bit um, to give you some more sort of flexibility and take strain off the back day to day anyway. Um, again, with any position, there's always a downside. So I find that the downside for me is kind of eventually, I almost get like sort of dead legs because it's kind of, you know, squeezing the blood out my feet, my lower leg. Um, but again, it's, we're not looking for one perfect solution in any of these scenarios. It's having a few strategies we know we can use and the key is cycling between things. Because again, the most important thing, and I can't stress this enough, if you're in any position for long enough and you don't move, something's gonna get annoyed. So again, if we have two or three strategies we can cycle between, you can sort of stack those strategies to kind of buy you the time that you need and not aggravate your back. So for example, you, know, you could sit with your back against the couch for a bit, cross-legged, maybe come to this one for a little bit and then go back with your legs outstretched and then sort of rotate between the three. Um, and again, that's no position and we've sort of letting the back round and we're not sort of aggravating and, and draining that bank account. Worst case we're gonna do is you might just get some tight spots in knees or legs, um, but that's taking the strain away from the back, especially when you first start, you need to let that back settle. Um, you know, you've, you've really got to remove those aggravators. So sitting on a couch is one for you. You have to do away with it 100%. Well, the worst thing I see people do um, is they'll be sort of at home at the couch and they've got to work in the evening or just generally working from home, haven't got a decent desk set up. So I think, oh, I'll sit on the couch instead. Give themselves a little stool like this or a coffee table or something to kind of perch the laptop on. And now they're kind of, you know, in this, they're kind of really hunched over and now the upper back's in a bad, tight position as well. So uh, my recommendation would be, be to um, try and use like a kneeling strategy, um, like we covered in the last video, I'll get the cushion out. So if you get the right sort of size desk or coffee table, you can sort of kneel and work if it's a little bit higher, or you can try the modified, you know, sit on your heels position for a bit of time like this, or you can actually roll this in front of you and sit with your back against the couch if it's the right height, and just sit you know, with your hands out in front of you and use the, couch, the back of the, the couch as a bit of support while you sit on the floor. Um, but whatever you're gonna do, like that position I just showed you, you know, hunched over the laptop, that is gonna, if you want a real you know, easy way to drain your bank out very quickly and start causing problems, that's gonna be it. So obviously a lot of problems um, that I see when I'm coaching people is they're, 
great at doing the exercises and they get their minds set into doing the right things and making it strong. However, removing aggravators, particularly passive ones, so they're ones that aren't necessarily movement based, and they're generally stuff that you slip into where your mind is elsewhere. So people can be sat working on a laptop, doing video calls that may be for hours on end in that sort of position, that's gonna make your lower back, hips, and your upper back all very, very tight and stiff. Um, so if you're on that kind of knife edge with your back pain, that's gonna keep you there. Uh, and it's definitely gonna make the back very twingy and just generally unpleasant to deal with. So again, you have gotta be aware of these passive aggravators, we have gotta remove them. That's the hard bit, is changing behaviors, especially when it comes to sort of posture, um, to spare that bank, bank balance and let the back settle. So remember, you imagine it's like a scab, you know, let that scab heal so the back can recover. If you keep picking at it all the time, it's just gonna be angry all the time. It's never gonna get a chance to settle. But again, that gives you, it's not like a be all and end all, um, but it just gives you a few ideas to start thinking about with back positions, because obviously couches for a lot of people are absolutely horrendous. Um, the other thing you can do as well, apart from just changing how you use the couch, how you sit on it, um, or not sit on it is the case, um, you can actually upgrade if you wanted to the, the foam you get. There are companies that do sort of uh, high density sort of memory foam for couches and things. Just that gets a bit more technical um, because if there's nowhere in your area that's kind of expertise in that sort of field, you have to start, it becomes a bit of a DIY project. Um, obviously it's a bit more involved, you have to start measuring, cutting foam yourself to kind of get it to fit. Um, but you can obviously change the couches if you want to, that is a, a possibility, just it's a bit more technical. So maybe changing the strategy with how you sit might be the best option for most people. Um, but yeah, couches, are definitely horrific uh, for a lot of people. So again, a few strategies to think about. Try them, see how you go, and then develop some ideas and strategies that's gonna work for yourself. And again, the idea is to preserve that bank balance as much as we can and keep that back out of aggravation as much as we can.